1030 News with Tracy Spicer. Israel sends in the tanks to get square after a bus blast. Hands up, outrage as the US puts the finger on terror suspects. And one all, the blues belted in Origin 2. But first this morning, payback time for the Israelis following the latest suicide bomb attack that killed 17 people. Heavy gunfire has erupted close to Yasser Arafat's Ramallah compound, but the Palestinian leader is reportedly safe. Security forces say the shooting broke out after around 50 Israeli tanks and bulldozers rolled into the town. The incursion follows a massive bomb blast on an Israeli bus. The driver again counting his lucky stars after surviving four Palestinian suicide attacks. Lucky to be alive, the driver of bus number 830, Mickey Harrell, cheating death one more time. This was the fourth terror attack near him in the past few months. And this is what's left of his ticket book beside him on his bed. And this is the bus after it was consumed by flames and flipped over twice by the force of the blast. Rescue services rushing in for survivors found bodies instead. 13 soldiers among the dead and a man and a woman who perished together, locked in a last embrace. Mickey told me he's driven his route for 25 years. His passengers were more like friends. I got out through the window, he says, and I started taking the wounded to the centre of the road. It was hard for me to help anyone because of the heat. The bus was on fire. It broke my heart. For Palestinian extremists, this bombing was a departure, another way to kill on a large scale. In recent weeks, Palestinian militants have been varying their tactics, trying to carry out bigger, more deadly strikes. The attack here today was different. Instead of a lone suicide bomber boarding the bus, a car packed with explosives was driven towards it. When it was right alongside, the bomb was detonated, guaranteeing a massive blast and a heavy death toll. With Israel counting its new dead and wounded, the Palestinian Authority condemned the attack. Israel says, we've heard all that before. So its retaliation has begun, choppers and tanks closing in on the nearby town of Janine, source of many suicide bombers. A new terror crackdown in the United States. Thousands of people will be forced to undergo fingerprinting and identity checks to stop potential attackers from entering the country. Hog-tired and bundled off an international flight, this is the new harsh reality for troublemakers in the sky. Fighter jets like these escorted the Mexico to Europe flight to an unscheduled US stop after the man who'd been drinking heavily hurt another passenger and spat on the aircraft wall. American security is now extreme, but today the White House took it a controversial step further. This system will expand substantially. America's scrutiny of those foreign visitors who may pose a national security concern and enter our country. Visitors from high-risk countries that sponsor state terrorism will soon be fingerprinted and photographed at the border, affecting over 100,000 arrivals in the first year alone. Aliens in the country for more than 30 days must also register to crack down on those overstaying their visas. But Muslim and Middle Eastern groups are outraged, saying the system smacks of discrimination. Richard Reid uh, will not fit the profile. John Walker will not fit the profile. And that, that tells us that uh, uh, terrorism uh, uh, comes in all colours and, 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 and races. There are also concerns that the already strained border check system won't cope, but the Bush administration says it's essential to stop future attacks. Terrorists and wanted criminals often attempt to enter the country using assumed names or false documents, false passports. But fingerprints don't lie. In the United States, Deborah Knight, 10 News. Another embarrassment for the federal government trying to tighten this country's security. Its plans to beef up ASIO's powers have been flatly rejected as an attack on civil liberties. To fight terrorism on the home front, the government wants to boost ASIO's powers. But under its plans, children as young as 10 can be detained, strip searched and questioned incommunicado. A provision a parliamentary committee considering the changes says goes too far. What the committee has tried to do is get a balance between protecting our civil rights and uh, 
giving our agencies the opportunity to uh, act as swiftly and as promptly and as efficiently as they possibly can in these unprecedented times. The committee says the bill, which also allows people to be detained indefinitely without criminal charges, without legal representation and no right to remain silent, undermines key legal rights. It's demanding changes. People should be protected against self-incrimination because they lose the right to silence and after seven days they should be charged or released. It's the latest blow for Attorney General Darrell Williams who's been forced to water down earlier anti-terrorism bills also branded unacceptable but he says he'll consider any recommendations in an effort to get the new laws through Parliament. Labor says it's not good enough. Now, we are living in terrible times and we do require special measures but you don't lose the plot in the process. Leonie Mellor, 10 News. The United Nations has labelled Australia a human rights abuser, slamming our detention centres as the worst in the world. The condemnation has come from a special UN delegation which is reported to have assessed Australia's system of detaining refugees as a gross abuse of human rights. The delegation has told welfare groups here they haven't seen anything worse out of 40 inspections of centres around the world. An intensive search has begun for a helicopter with five people on board missing in the Northern Territory. Five fixed-wing aircraft and three helicopters are scouring a large area of the Mitchell Range, southwest of Gove. The helicopter was carrying out survey work for a proposed pipeline when it disappeared. A final farewell to former South African cricket captain Hansi Kronje. Family, former teammates and fans gathered in his hometown to pay tribute to the 32-year-old who was killed in a plane crash last weekend. We have come to pay respects to Hansi Kronje, an outstanding leader, an accomplished cricketer and friend. Kronje's wife acknowledging her husband's indiscretions. He made a mistake. He was still the same, Hansi. A kind and loving husband, a genuine friend and an honourable man. Some sore heads in Queensland this morning after the team's upset win in the second game of Rugby League's State of Origin series. It's now one all with New South Wales, the decider three weeks away. Minutes before kickoff, and the only people on Brisbane's deserted streets are rushing to get to a television to watch Queensland take on the dreaded Blues. The pub, the last refuge for some. A different language spoken among these locals. Even the local goddesses ignored as all eyes focused on the sporting giants on the big screen. The early viewing not too pretty. New South Wales throwing everything at Queensland's line and coming dangerously close. Can they get it down? Johns puts a kick in. That might be a try. Luck on the home team side. Each attempt denied. And the mob offered their collective thanks. The Maroons striking first blood. Chris McKenna setting up barnstorming winger Lottie Takiri. Then a sensation. Rookie Justin Hodges coming up with a play that will long haunt him. The Blues rallied, but guess what? No try. Queensland skipper Gordon Tallis leading the way in the second half. And it looked even better through the eyes at the local watering hole. Hodges' nightmare continuing, no one could believe he'd make the same blunder a second time. I can't believe it! Blues forward Luke Rickardson recovering from his shock to score. Sean Timmins helping the Blues to get within two points of Queensland. But Andrew Johns' attempt just missed. Not that any of the locals minded. Takiri scoring his 18th point of the game, a Queensland record, with this last second try. And this punter best summed up the feeling. Daniel Lane, 10 News. And still to come in 10's morning news, the world's first IVF twins blow out 21 candles in Melbourne. And blast off, Endeavour sets a course for the International Space Station. Extending our reach.